You're making a piece of furniture, you got a really wide panel, you need to try to clamp somewhere in the middle of it. How do you do that? We get creative. Let's say we need to clamp something in the middle of my workbench. Well, my workbench is about 25 inches wide. Well, my widest clamp has a throat that's about four and a half inches, which is kind of standard. So that's definitely not gonna work. Well, there's a couple ways to get around this. You could use a call. A call is just basically a board that has a little bow in it. You put the bow down, you clamp on one side, clamp on the other, and it applies pressure down in the middle. Works great, I use it all the time. But sometimes you can't do that. For instance, let's say that this workbench is pressed up against a wall. Well, you can't clamp on the other side, there's a wall there, so you have to pull your workbench out to do that. Or if you're clamping, a panel and you have no place to put a clamp at all on the other side. Let's say it's a, a cabinet or something like that. You have another board over there. So you can't actually get a clamp on there to clamp. Well, that's where you can make a jig that does this. I got this gnarly piece of oak here. Uh, this was from a slab that I chainsaw milled and it's just, it has too many cracks and, and it's bent all over the place and it's just not something that I could use for fine furniture. But works perfect for making a jig. You could also just use construction lumber for this, but I don't typically have a lot of construction lumber in the shop, but if you get some two by fours, that's perfect for this as well. So I'm gonna take this and uh, do some chopping, just get the pieces that I kind of need, uh, try to figure out how to make this work. I rough milled up my boards and I let them acclimate overnight because, well, it was kind of a thick board. And if I would have just milled it all down to its final dimensions and then started working with it, there's a possibility that it could twist or warp or something. So now I'm gonna cut them down to the final dimensions. So my plan is to have, basically I need to have an, an upper and lower jaw. So these are gonna be arms that will do the clamping. So I'm gonna make the arms one and a half inches square. Now, as far as the length goes, they could be whatever length you want. I'm gonna probably shoot for maybe about 15 inches or so on that. And then those basically are going to be connected to two boards that stand upright, like these. So I'm gonna mill these down to about three quarters of an inch thick. I'm making up these dimensions. If you wanna make this jig, do whatever works for you. After rebuilding all my pieces, I went ahead and cut them to their final length over the table saw. So now I've got the tall piece here, which is about 12 inches, and then the arms are about 16 inches long. So the, the bottom arm just gets glued onto there. That one's really easy. So now I need to take these side pieces and drill some holes all the way through. A bolt will be able to fit through the hole, through the upper arm, and then out the other side. I gotta drill holes in these pieces, so I am gonna do a hole about every uh, inch or so. Now that these are marked where I need to drill, I can take these, stick them together with some double-sided tape, go over to the drill press, drill both pieces at the same time. I got all the holes drilled in the side pieces and I went ahead and drilled a hole in the upper arm. So now the plan is to glue the bottom piece in between those two arms and the top piece goes up here and then it, it it does like this. Glue's dry. Now there's one major thing to do, which is I wanna put something on these arms that would make contact with the work piece. So I'm not just having these arms touch the work piece like that. So I was thinking about some ideas I did see a picture of a jig like this online and they used golf balls, which I thought was kind of clever. So they drilled a big hole, they embedded a golf ball like halfway down on both arms and those golf balls smashed together on the workpiece, works really well. I was thinking about an alternative idea, furniture feet. So these are the types of uh, feet that you would screw into like a bottom of a table leg or something. You could unscrew it to level out a table. So. These I got off Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to check them out. But they have a little pivot, pivot ball too. I thought that might be a good feature, especially for this top one here, because that is at an angle. Plenty of surface area too for the workpiece. So let's try that out.
pretty simple stuff. Now it's time to test it out and see if it works. So really, you just take this, put it on your work surface there, take a regular clamp and clamp down on the arms. Moment of truth. That's pretty good. I can't really complain. Uh, probably a little bit better than what I thought it would be. There is a, a couple ways you could probably upgrade this if you really, really wanted to. You might be able to find some sort of like rubber boot to put on the furniture feet there. Or maybe if you had those, you could probably go over to like a disc sander and just scuff them up to get even more of a texture on them. But I mean, right now, I, I can't really ask for much more than that. So I'm pretty happy with it. So hopefully this gives you some ideas to get in your shop, maybe make something similar to this. If you have some ideas on how to upgrade this, leave a comment below. And we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.